Ezekiel chapter 4, from Canute and I, to all of you out there in the wondering world, questioning world, hungry world. We're going to bring you some Bible study today in Ezekiel chapter 4. Canute's going to even give you a, a hunt greeting, aren't you? You want my hat. You want, you want my hat to take it and eat it, but no, you're not going to get it today. He loves to destroy hats. He loves to bug daddy, too. Okay, say hi to everybody. Okay, say hi. Can you say hi? Can you talk to him? Give me a kiss. Give, 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 give him a kiss. Oh, you got my hat. Okay, well, I guess I'll keep him quiet for a while anyway. Okay. Okay, you're the winner today. Yeah, I talked to the dog. Okay, <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 4. That's not very nice, you know, taking daddy's hat. We're getting used to it, though. We've got lots of hats that have been ripped apart. Okay, Ezekiel 4. If you like happy puppet shows, you'll like Ezekiel 4. Uh, Ezekiel probably didn't care much for the happy puppet show. He had to do some rough things. Uh, when the kids were young, I, I liked to do a little happy puppet show with puppets and stuff, do little Bible stories and, you know, like with Uncle Charlie and all that kind of stuff. You know, uh, puppet shows are great, but unfortunately I can do, only do puppet shows for Canute now and he, he gets disinterested like a cat in a bag of uh, yarn. Anyway, here we go. A little happy puppet show today. A serious happy puppet show. Now you son of man, take a brick, set it in front of you, and draw the city of Jerusalem on it. Then lay siege against it, constructing a siege wall, build a ramp, pitch military camps, and place battering rams against it on all sides. Take an iron plate and set it up as an iron wall between yourself and the city, and turn your face towards it so that it is under siege, and besiege it. This will be a sign for the house of Israel. If you were a, a, a woman out there, or perhaps you played dolls with your little doll set, if you're a guy, you had G.I. Joes of some sort, and you kind of set it up and played army, you know, against characters, army guys, you know. And that was kind of fun, you know, kind of taught you strategy and so forth. Build little foxholes. That's what Ezekiel was doing here, to get the point across to Israel that they were drug off to a foreign land. And Israel's in a foreign land now, right? They are in Babylon, right? And they are, they are seriously oppressed because of their wickedness and their sin. They were God's people and they should have known better but they chose to try to be like the world so they could have friends, you know. How many Christians doom themselves to hell because they want to have friends and give in to the bar scene, go into nightclubs and strip clubs and involved in all kinds of garbage, you know. And um, nobody's, you know, when you're young, you, you know, you, 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 perhaps you taste that a little bit. I think everybody does to a little bit. Very few have not. But what it, all it does really is it leaves scars in your life, you know. I've been there, you've been there. And it, it just, you, the only thing you can do is look back as a, as, a, as a, you know, as a grown man or woman, you look back and you say to yourself, man, I wish I'd have spent that time in my room studying the Bible and praying instead of, you know, looking to have fun with people out in the world who are never, ever happy, right? You know. But to know the truth and continue and continue and continue and continue in wickedness has a price. And the price is judgment. And if you were at one point God's child, he will continue to make you pay the price. And it's not going to get you into heaven, but the point of it is to turn you back to repentance so that you don't wind up in the lake of fire. 
as an ex-child of God, as a sinner. And God will try to get your attention. Now, God's trying to get Israel's attention. Verse 4. Then lie down on your left side and place the iniquity of the house of Israel on it. And you will bear their iniquity for the number of days you lie on your side. For I have assigned you the years of their iniquity according to the number of days you lie down. 390 days. He's going to lie down on his left side for 390 days. He's going to be told how to make some little bread cooked over some nasty stuff. And uh, whether or not he got to go up and go to the bathroom and take a bath and sleep in his house, we don't really know all the, the, the uh, completeness of it. But point being is he spent the day like a job, uh, at least, you know, if not stayed, you know, frozen there for this 390 days in the, in the weather and the elements. We don't really know. We don't get the whole breakdown. But for 390 days, at least, kind of like you go to your job every day and you go out and lay on your side for 390 days. <sighs> kind of brutal, kind of rough. But if you're a prophet of God, if you're a child of God, and you want to obey God, then you obey him. So you will bear the iniquity of the house of Israel. And when you have completed these days, lie down again, but on your right side. And bear the iniquity of the house of Judah. Remember that Israel and Judah were separated into two kingdoms. And we've talked about that before at, uh, at nauseum. So we won't go into it. So uh, Israel and Judah, two separate kingdoms, same nation of God's people, just divided. Like the U.S. was during the Civil War, a war that should have never happened. But sometimes it does happen, and a lot of people pay the price. Usually the little man, the little, the little factory workers, the middle, the middle guy, the poor guy. I have assigned you 40 days, a day for each year. You must turn your face towards the siege of Jerusalem with your arm bared and prophesy against it. Be aware that I will put cords on you so that you cannot turn from side to Decide until you have finished the days of your siege. Also take wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt. If you ever had Ezekiel bread, I'm not trying to give these people a, uh, kudos, but I, I'm gonna because there's a really good bread out there. It has to be refrigerated. It's got no preservatives called Ezekiel bread. And I kind of like to have that sometimes in my work sandwiches when I go off to the factory. Um, it's pretty good. Uh, it's very healthy bread. As uh, wheat, barley, uh, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt made into a little bread. So put them in a single container and make them into bread for yourself. You are to eat it during the number of days you lie down in your side, 390 days. The food you eat each day will be 8 ounces by weight. You will eat it from time to time. You are also to drink water by measure, one-sixth of a gallon which you will drink from time to time. You will eat it as you would a barley cake and bake it over dried human excrement in their sight. The Lord said, This is how the Israelites will eat their bread, ceremonially unclean amongst the nations where I will banish them. Now that's pretty nasty, baking bread over, um, you know, it's like going hiking and, and going into the latrine and digging out some stuff to cook your food in. That's pretty nasty. But Ezekiel is going to cry out on this one and say, Lord, have mercy. So Ezekiel cries out here, But I said, Ah, Lord God, I have never been defiled from my youth until now. I have not eaten anything that died naturally or was mauled by wild beasts, and impure meat has never entered my mouth. That was obviously an unclean act, and God is uh, like what God told Hosea to do. And the only man ever in history, God is told, that's Hosea, I'm shifting just a little bit, only man God has ever told to go back to a woman that's an adulterer on you. Never does God say go and defile yourself to a, a, a wife that has taken another man in and defiled herself with her. Uh, because you become one with her and that man has become one with her. And there's uh, the exchange of bacteria and disease and Never would God say, go back to an adulterous wife. 
in the Old Testament and New Testament, the, the, the adultery was, a, was a, uh, a death penalty crime if you committed adultery. Now we live in different society, but definitely God does uh, say uh, the priests were never allowed to marry a, a divorced woman, only clean. But a woman that's been born again, you know, that's, then she has the right to start over again. You as a man, if you've been divorced, if you're born again, you have a right to start over. But a man that has a wife that's cheated on him, she's unclean. And he has the right to divorce her. He should divorce her. That's my opinion. And she should, otherwise, you're, once again, you're becoming one with somebody that became one with your wife. So that's an abomination to God. But Hosea is the only man that entered into an unclean relationship. That God said, this is what Israel is. And that was kind of a statement. So yes, you do have the right. And if your husband's cheated on you, committed adultery, you have the right to divorce him and go start over again and marry only in Christ, only marry a Christian. Christians should never, ever, ever marry a non-believer. Never. So that's, that's a word from the bear. From the Bible. Through a bear to you. And I will direct you to 1 Corinthians if you need to, but I think you already kind of know that. You can go over our Corinthians study, and we'll uh, talk about that a lot there. Anyway, impurity is not for the child of God. And so, anyway, back to Ezekiel here. I'm getting back. I shifted there for a little bit, but I caught myself, and we're back, back on track here. And Ezekiel's crying out, say, Lord, don't make me eat bread cooked over human waste. It's unclean. And the, and the purpose of God telling him to do that was to demonstrate they refused to walk in light and purity in Israel and Judah, so I'm going to let them have the uncleanness that they wanted in foreign lands. But Ezekiel's going to stand up and say, wait a minute, Lord, please let me intercede you. So in verse 15, he replied to me, look, I will let you use cow excrement instead of human excrement, and you can make your bread over that. Praise the Lord, probably. Ezekiel's saying, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> That's brutal. I, I, would you want your steaks and your hamburgers cooked over something nasty like that? No, even the cow excrement, that's still pretty nasty. But it's to demonstrate the nastiness and the filthiness that Israel is living in with the filthy idolatrous practices and the, the Islamabub and the Buddhism, Hinduism and Shintoism and Abayism and all that garbage we have now that they try to introduce that. You know, there's all many roads to God. There's not, there's only one road to God. There's only actually only one doorway to God, and that's through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But the world and the false religions empowered by Satan and the spirit and the power of the air, they try to convince people that it's okay, it's all one. It's not all one. It's only through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, unto the Father. That's the only way. The only doorway is through him. If you don't go through him, then you're out. You can't go through his mother, Mary. You can't go through the saints. You can't go through the is isabubs and islamabubs and the Buddhists and the Hindus and do rituals and starve yourself and whip yourself. That will do nothing for you. You'll still wind up in a lake of fire forever burning and screaming your head off. It is only through Jesus Christ, the Son of God, where salvation is at. And Israel got caught up into the, we want to be friends and have lots of friends and go to the nightclubs and get drunk at parties and smoke dope and exchange wives and have many girlfriends and, you know, involved with Ouija boards. And they were committing paganism and yet going to the, to the temple on the Sabbath and offering their sacrifices. Isn't that bizarre? But that's what they were doing. Then he said to me, Son of man, I am going to cut off the supply of bread in Jerusalem, and they will anxiously eat bread rationed by weight, and, and in dread drink water by measure. So they will lack bread and water, and everyone will be dev devastated and waste away because of their iniquity. They 
probably you've heard this expression, nobody's perfect. And, and, and that's the truth, you know. You think your, your parents and your mom and your grandma, they're really godly people, or perhaps they weren't godly, I don't know. But the point being is, all of us were born a sinner. And we all have to be born again. Whether we're born again at two years old or 120, we all have to be born again. We have to see Jesus, confess, repent, know, acknowledge, and just make the decision. It's not a matter of the words, well, okay, Lord, I'm going to do this like the thief on the cross. You know, he told his, his other buddy, you know, that were involved in, you know, murder and thievery and all that kind of stuff. He said, we're guilty for our sins. That's what, for, you got to say that. We're guilty, obviously, because you feel guilty and you need a Savior. That, that's in us by the Holy Spirit. And God put that in us to, to bring us to Him. Some people play that down, reject that, and cover it over with by medicating themselves, being involved in fornication relationships and, and uh, hostilities and robberies and you know, murders and partying. But it's still always there. The separation from God. There's only one thing that can separate you from God, and that's sin. And everybody has it the, the instant we're born. And we all have to be born again in Jesus Christ. Israel's going through it. They had the temple worship. But the Son of God is always there watching over them, trying to get them to turn to Him. To turn to the Father. He gave them the laws, the prophets, and yet they continued in their sin. God forbid of all the goodness, the good blessings, the good spiritual love God has given to us. And you come in Christ, and then to go away and try to blend in to the world's parties enjoyments their paganism Israel was caught up in a terrible way as a born again bear there is nothing better than a relationship with Jesus Christ because life gets hard but no matter how hard life is as a child of Jesus Christ, you always know he's right there because he's right in here. On the day you turn to Jesus Christ, he said, I will. And all you have to have said is, Lord, come in. And his answer is going to be, I will. And for those of you out there that know him, best thing you can do in your life is Jesus. Please come in. He will. God bless you, friend. See you next time.